thank you very much, John uh, Weiner, for being uh, today with us. You're going to travel uh, in a few days to Gaza as being part of the flotilla uh, with uh, many organizations and many people into the civil society and try to uh, bring uh, humanitarian uh, aids. But before we talk about the flotilla, can you uh, uh, describe a little bit your background because you have thousand years of experience <laughs> into uh, peace and nonviolence. Uh, you're coming from the Quaker background, um, if I understood well. And so tell us a little bit more about that. <clears throat> well, it's true. I'm from a Quaker tradition at present. I actually uh, spent most of my life as a Catholic. Okay. Uh, faithful Catholic. I've been involved uh, watching the situation in my government supporting terrible things going on in the Middle East, breaking both international law and yeah. and local domestic laws. And I've participated with many wonderful people having moved recently to near DC where you can get to a lot of uh, people in, in power yeah. and done education for Congress, lobbying, uh, demonstrations, both large and small, uh, die-ins in, in various public places, uh, and uh, everything I can think of, including occupying the area around the Israeli embassy and uh, Secretary of State Blinken's house. Mm -hmm. While we've reached, we've reached a few better angels in the hearts of a few legislatures, uh, for the most part, the slaughter goes on, and uh, it's it's too much for me just to sit by and accept. And so with my history with World Beyond War, now as a retired emergency physician, right, I, I see my work as violence prevention. War making is the most egregious kind of violence because it's the kind people actually are proud to do rather than most other kinds of violence where people, well, how can we prevent that? Uh -huh. It's war, we pay huge amounts of our brain power and taxes Thanks, yeah. to promote yeah. it. Yeah. And so I'm always looking for alternatives. Whatever good war purports to do, my many years of experience in both study and field experience teaches me that most good things can be done far better with nonviolent actions than they can with killing people in large numbers. So I think the world would have sanctioned Israel enough to make it behave in a more rational way had it not had so much diplomatic cover at the United Nations and military support uh, through, its, through its entire history. And it's a shame because it does such a disservice to, I think, the religion of Judaism. Yeah. You know, with all the demonstrations here, one of the things that makes me much more comfortable is seeing Jews take the lead in so many of them, saying, yeah. this is not my religion. Yeah. We're about liberating people. We're not about oppressing people. Can you tell us a little bit more specifically what's, what's going to happen? Are you, you're you going to be traveling in a few days? I will fly to Turkey. And from there, take some training with my compatriots in how we will handle various situations. And then we will set sail for Gaza. And we hope that uh, people will be good hard enough to allow us to land. We have uh, 5,500 tons of food and medical supplies to deliver to a desperate population. And we hope we'll be allowed to do that. And why do you think so? Until now, it has been very complicated to get through. And with that, what happened with Iran yesterday, the situation is not getting easier. Yeah, very, very uh, uh, concerning what, ha what happened with uh, Israel attacking an embassy. Uh, when, I, when I think what happens if, you know, if people attacked an Israeli embassy anywhere or a U.S. embassy, the violent response we would have and the threats we would make. And when Iran justifiably complains about that, uh, um, instead of an apology, we we block a Security Council condemnation of that. And then what are they supposed to do? I think it's horrible that they sent missiles. I don't think that can help anything. On the other hand, what are they supposed to do? Yeah. Um, it, world beyond war, we're really convinced that weapons always make every situation worse. I mean, human beings are much better at, at cooperation and nonviolence than they are at violence. I mean, pe people That's naturally true. want to help each other people pretty readily go to a aid of somebody in need. To train people to do horrific things takes enormous amounts of, of propaganda training, training yeah. and or trauma to a brain. Yeah. What's the saying? Hurt people, hurt people. And you have 
people who see the, the very difficult times that, that many cultures have caused the Jews over millennia and, and say, we finally need a place of our own. Like we apparently maybe had, maybe had once in, uh, you know, uh, 2,000, 2,500 years ago. Uh, and we need that back. But I think current events show is, does, do people in Israel feel safe? Uh, when the, the few times I've been there, it, it didn't seem so, at least no more safe than my Jewish friends here. Mm -hmm. So it's an awful lot of killing and violence and oppression if you're not getting absolute safety from it. Do you think we are at the door of World War III or it's already started? Well, Pope Francis said several years ago that we're seeing World War III now in slow motion. And this, these episodes could speed it up quite a bit. Um, let's hope that that our country, which I think has a lot of say over what Israel does, manages to to control whatever response they have to this recent attack on them yesterday. Iran has said that's that's enough for us. We made our point. Yeah. Over you attacking our embassy. That's what you said today. Yeah. Yeah. And let's let's let it stand. We're even right now, and. I would hope that we'd agree with that, but then then not do nothing else. Let's start some serious diplomacy. Let's do the things it takes to make for peace in the region. And um, so what is the team who's going with you? I mean, I know it's like Media Benjamin, she's going to travel there, or you have people from uh, other organization or? Yeah, as far as I know, there are five of us going from the, the Washington DC area. Mm -hmm. And we'll meet up with uh, all 30 or 40 Americans from other parts of the U.S. and other parts of the world. And from what I understand, meet many hundreds of people from other countries that will be manning these boats, simply declaring our concern for humanity and an end to this kind of violence and, and blockade. And, and so you're going to get into the boat in Turkey and hopefully be able to, uh, to get to the port in, um... in Gaza. In Gaza or close by. What the people can do to support? What can how people can get involved? What what does any anything could be done from people who are uh, uh, watching this uh, this interview? Well, if I'm talking to Americans, and I won't talk to Americans because that includes really Mexicans and Canadians, and the Canadians have decided they're going to stop sending weapons to Israel. That's a good good sign and stop supporting uh, what the International Criminal Court, International Court of Justice is calling probable genocide. Uh -huh. So to USians, the people in the US, I would simply ask, please call for a ceasefire and ask for specific protection of people bringing humanitarian aid into Gaza, whether it's us or World Central Kitchen, or all the other agencies, and funding should be restored for UNRWA. They're the ones that have the greatest capacity to, to feed and take care of people in of their own in in Gaza. And we need to we need to protect them. They need to be protected, not not uh, dehumanized, and not cut off. So yeah, a ceasefire and a safe corridor is what I would ask people to simply. Call the president. There's an easy White House number to call to state your opinion. There's an easy contact thing on whitehouse.gov and, and and call your senators and, and congressperson and say, hey, I got a friend going to, to Gaza. Please uh, help keep him safe. Yeah. And again, for me, I, I've tried absolutely everything else. I've laid on the ground covered in bloody sheets trying to make the point that our weapons are doing this to innocent civilians in the largest numbers percentage-wise of any conflict in this century. You know, I've been to Ukraine three times, twice to the front line, and the devastation there is does not match what's in Gaza. You know, in, in over two years of war, there have been 11,000 or so civilians killed, doc documented by the United Nations. In two years of a two countries much larger than this at war. And the Israelis had killed that many civilians in Gaza in the first two months. And that number now has tripled and on its way to quadrupling. And that doesn't even count all the deaths from malnutrition and, and disease that we're going to see as the infrastructure has been destroyed. Um, Aaron Bushnell, you know, who is a Air Force, active duty Air Forceman who gave a wonderful speech. I hope people won't just read the headlines about how he needed mental health 
and and the Air Force said, how can we cut down our suicides, which are quite high anyway, because it was more than just a suicide. He said, I can't live with a country that's normalizing the burning of children in Gaza. Yeah, now, I feel terrible about what he did. I could never do it myself. I would hope nobody would. Yeah. But then came forth another young man, uh, Larry Ebert, you know. Yeah, I interviewed him last week. Yeah. From Spain. Yeah. He and I yeah. spent uh, almost two weeks together hanging out in Washington and yeah. lovely young guy. And he said you know, he was watching the weapons going into I know. Israel. And, and he, he could didn't not, know what they were not, for. He could not do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. He's back. They called him back. But uh, yeah. These, um, that's what we need, more people just to say no. You know, uh, what do they say? Uh, for evil to triumph, simply good people have to do nothing. As soon as enough people do something, it'll end. So please join us one way or the other. Thank you so much. Good luck. And uh, if you have any information you want to share um, now or later on, keep me posted. Um, okay. This is your house. Right. And um, thank you so much. Thanks.